What is up YouTube and welcome back to 100 days of Python mastery. Uh, today is day number nine. So you're on day nine to becoming uh, a Python master. Uh, let's jump right into the debugger and go through these uh, examples and see what's what. So the first task we're being asked is to reverse. Yep, that is spelled wrong. Reverse an input that was given to us as a string. So the input's going to be a string. We want to reverse it. So we can do x. We have our variable equals input. Type what do you want to reverse? So I'm going to F8 through that and type what you want to reverse. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put I want to reverse this. Enter. And now in memory for a variable x, it stores what I put in. And then b equals, I'm putting my open parenthesis say b is equaling a string. And the dot join method is going to bring together the variable that I put in reversed x. So reversed is essentially a function that is already built into Python and I'm reversing x and x was that input. And again, remember, you can only use join uh, methods on strings. So we're already in a string, which is uh, clear via the parentheses here. Print b. So f8. So it says, oh, wow, it almost looks like shit. That's pretty cool. Um, printing b. And then it says, see height is reviri ot tna i. I didn't mean to make that sound German, so I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, but hey, it is what it is. There's our first example. Um, or we could have used a start and step slicing the string in steps of negative one. So what I'm going to do in this next piece of next piece of code here below where I have print line number nine is where I'm at. I'm printing X and X is the input that we typed in, right? So X is equal to the, the, the value that we typed in, which is I want to reverse this. And if you look at what I'm doing, I'm putting in like a, the indexing brackets for the string and I'm putting in the colon colon, which means from the beginning all the way to the end. And then I'm going minus one. So I'm telling Python, go to the beginning of the string, go to the end of the string, and then go minus one in a stepwise fashion, minus one. So we should get the same exact output, and we do. We get our, our pseudo German coding for whatever the hell it is I wrote. Um, so there's, there's two different ways that you could have done a reversing of a string. Next, we want to count even or odd from a series of numbers. This is a pretty standard uh, example that you'll get in a number of different places when you're learning Python or any coding language for that matter. So we're going to define um, odd even count. Odd even count is whatever the hell you want to name it. That's just what I named it because you want your code to be readable also so when you go back to it weeks, months, years later, you know what the hell it is you were trying to do. So we're creating a definition of odd even count. and We're putting X as the input and what we're calling. So X is I want to reverse this. That's what X equals right now, which is not what we're going to want. F equals eight. So you notice that was pretty cool. So I called X and Python's telling me X equals this, which is obviously it's correct. Python's only going to do what's right. And if you recall, we don't we don't actually execute through functions until we call them. So it was on line 13 telling me what X is equal. And then when I hit F8, it jumped all the way down to line 23 because that was the next executable line of code because we're not executing a function. It's only when we call it. So now, now I'm going to have a new value of X when I, so there, sure enough, now up on top here, X is now a, a list and it has all the values that I typed in down here because now our variable X is different. Now that's essentially like utilizing a global function. So now we're going to F8 through that. And then we have print odd even count. That's what we executed through. So we here, I'm using the print function and I'm calling what I defined and I'm saying X and X has all these values here. So what I did was I said, take, take this list, run it through this function and give me the output of the odd numbers and the even numbers. You can see on the right, we have odd count of six, even numbers five. And if you actually go through this, that is correct. So what did it do in the, the defining of odd even event? We created an odd count of zero, even count of zero just to start them both off at zero for I in X. And again, that four that I could have been four numbers for whatever the hell you want it to be for trees in X um, and X. We have our, our list. We have semicolon if I modulo two equals zero. So if I take the number divided by two, if I have no remainder, well, then it's an even number, right? Because we're dividing by two. So two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. It's six divided by two, three. There's no remainder. So we know that that's going to be an even number. So we'd say even count plus equals one. So my even count originally was zero. So now it's going to be plus one. So then if that was true, then it would go to the next number that was in the list. It would go back to the for loop. 
Uh, if that's false, let's say it's three, three divided by two is 1.5. So we have a remainder, the 0.5 is the remainder. So then that line of if i modulo two equals zero would be false. So it's not gonna get to the even count number because since that's false, it's gonna go to the next executable line of code outside of that loop, which is else. And then else is odd count plus equals one because three is odd number, right? Anything that has a remainder of being divided by two is gonna be an odd number. So we're gonna have the odd count starting at zero. Now it's gonna be one. And then when I hit F8 again, or when I go through the function again from a computer standpoint, it's gonna go ne to the next I in X. So if it was, let's say that I was three, it's gonna go to the four. And then four divided by two is two, no remainder. So even count's gonna go up by one. And then it gets through five. And then five divided by two is not, it's you know, a two and a half. It's not a clean number. We have a remainder. So it's gonna skip the second if line and it's gonna to go to the else code, which is gonna increase the odd count. And it just keeps doing that. Um, uh, until the list is complete, iterating through the for loop. When it's done through the for loop, then we're telling the in the definition of what we want it to return. We want it to return the string odd count, and that's what we have here on the right, odd count six, odd count plus a string of the odd count variable, what, is, what, is, what, it, what it is existing when the for loop is done. So we started with an odd count of zero, but after we ran through the definition, we have an odd count of six and then we're doing plus, and then this uh, escape T is a way to do tab. So I just tabbed it over essentially by doing that escape T. Uh, another string of even count, and then the same thing, adding, concatenating a string, even count, what even count is, is worth after we get through that for loop that we iterated through in the defining of the odd even event, which in this case was five. Whew, all right, rocking and rolling. So given the list below, print out the item and its type. So we have our list here. So we have a list, uh, it's numeric, we have a integer, we have a float, we have a number with a variable and a letter, we have a Boolean, which is true, we have a string, here we have a tuple with two variables, we have a list with two with a two dimensional um, list, a two dimensional uh, tuple, we have class, we have dictionary, this is a key and a value, a key and a value, and you can see dictionary by the curly brackets as well. So I'll F8 through that. And then it says for ice cream. Just want to show you that it is creating a memory exactly what we put in. For ice cream and data, I called it ice cream again just to uh, bring home the fact that you can name it whatever the hell you want. For ice cream and data, print the string type of, then I have comma ice cream, so I'm saying print type of, and then whatever the variable for ice cream is, which in this case right now it's 1452 because that's what the first element in, in data is. Uh, and then I have comma the string is, and then comma type is a function. It's a built-in Python function. And I'm saying now give me the type of whatever that variable at that moment in time for ice cream is. So 1452 is an integer, so it better as hell tell me that it is an integer. And sure enough, it does on the right-hand side. Type of 1452 is class integer. And then I'm going to rock and roll the next one, 1123. Also, that's going to be a float. And then we're going to go 1, uh, 2J. That's complex because we're using number and a letter. And then just going through it again, true is a bool, and that is true. W3 resource is a string. And just running through, uh, we get tuples, we get a list, and then we have a dictionary, just like we said. Now that function is done. So not too bad, just utilizing, again, some string concatenation and so forth. Um, next, we're going to go through the next piece, which is write a program that prints all the numbers except 3 and 6. Um, now, again, when you're going through these examples and these exercises, don't think of them as like, when am I going to use this? How am I going to use this? Uh, just get through the idea of coding and get through the examples so that if I ever asked you to do this, you could do this. And this will make a lot more sense when we get to even, you know, Minecraft and Python, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, app building, utilizing Python, whatever the hell we're doing with it, all for data science as well. You're going to be utilizing all of these theories and premises and functions just using different inputs. So for i in range seven, why did I use seven? Well, because I want to, you know, not include six. And if I go to seven, I'll get seven numbers, but we're indexing at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is seven elements. Um, so for i in range seven, i is going to start out at zero because you know I didn't I didn't give it a starting point, so it's going to start at index at zero. For i does not equal three, and i does not equal six. Print i. So then. If we did one, does one not equal three? That's true. And one does not equal six? That's true. So then we can print one. And then we get to three. If does three not equal three? That's false. So it's going to skip that line 
and it's going to jump down to print a new line. And it w actually, I'm sorry, it will see that as false. The next executable line of code is still within that loop. We'd have to go to the next number, which would be four. And it's going to keep running through that inside this for loop until we're done with the whole for loop. So let us actually do that. So let me F8 through. So as you can see on the right hand side, we printed a zero. Now I'm at one. One is not equal to three. One is not equal to six. So we'll print out the one. And now we're going to go to two. Two is not three and two is not six. So we can print it. And now we're at three. Three is equal to three. So this is a false. So you're going to see even on the debugger, it's going to jump back up to the four I loop. Uh, because and it's not going to print to three in the output. It's going to change the I to four. And now we're going to print the four because that is still true. We're in the loop. Five is still true. So we'll print it. And then now we're at six. Six is not equal to three. And six is equal to not equal to six. Six, six is equal to six. So we're done with that for loop because our range is only going to seven. Um, and it's not including that number because, again, we're indexing at zero. So we're going to jump down to the next executable line, which is simply just to print a new line, which is what we do here. Moving down, program a Fibonacci sequence between zero and 50. Um, now, in Fibonacci sequence, you if you're starting at zero, you, ha you need two numbers, so zero and one. You have to have two numbers because what you're always doing is taking the more recent number and adding it to the previous number, and that's how you're getting your new number. So if we have zero and one, and then I'd say zero plus one is one. So the first Fibonacci sequence is going to be zero, one, one, and then one plus one is two, and two plus one is three, and three plus two is five, and that's how it's going to go on. So we have between the range of zero and 50. So here I have two variables, x and y. Let's F8 through that. So I have variable x, variable y equals 0, 1. So 0 is going to be tied to x, and 1 is going to be tied to y. While y is less than 50, right now it's 1, so it is less than 50. Print y, easy enough. We're going to print 1. And then I have xy equals, now y is going to be the new x, and y is going to take, the variable y is going to take on the assignment of x plus y. So that'll make sense if we do this. So print 1. So down here on the right-hand side, I printed this, pointed to the screen. So here we have the 1 that we printed through. We're going to F8 through, and then we're going to, when I did that, Y was equal to 1, so it was just going to be 1, 1, and then we're printing 1. Now Y is equal to 2, so we're still less than 50, that's true, so we can print the 2, but now the value of X is 2 because it's taking on Y. Let me go to this. The value of X is now 2 because it's taking on Y, and the new value of Y is going to be 3. So when we F8 up through there, sure enough, it's 3. So we're printing through, and then we're going to get 3. And then we're printing through, and then we're going to get f uh, 4 and 5. And it's just going to keep going while we get those numbers. And you might say, why are we not going sequentially? Y is constantly changing, because this Y up here is referring to this Y because it's a new assignment. So right now in the computer system, Y is equal to 34. So I have X, which is 34, and Y is now going to be 34 plus 34. F8, we're going to get the 55. I'm sorry, because we're doing 34 plus 21. That's what we're not seeing on here, the, the other variable for Y, because it is X, which is 34 up top here. Um, if I confused anybody, let me make it, let me make it clear. Um, Python, the variable, even though we're using it down here, x the first assignment of x was up top so that's where it's changing the variable so right now we have x equals 34 and y equals 55 how did we get that well this formula down here x and y so i'm going to f8 through this line right here up oh, that's why it stopped why because we only went from 0 to 50 y is less than 50 right now y is 55 55 is greater than 50 so it's going to stop there but what it was doing was it was printing the letter Y. So here, all of these outputs are the Y's. But the X's were being stored up top here. So when I had a Y of, let's take the Y of 8. When I had a Y of 8, and it was going through this code, it would have been doing 8 plus 5. Because when Y was 8, X up here would have been 5. And that's how I would have got the 13 based on the formula that we have here, X plus Y. So again, run through the code, play with it, break it, even change the formula if you want, see what it's going to do. Uh, that's the best way to learn this stuff is just to break everything and run through it all. So now uh, down below, we have write a program iterating 0 to 50, 
If the number is a multiple of 3, print supa instead of a number. If the number is a multiple of 5, print badass, again, instead of the number. And if the number is a multiple of both, print super badass. So let me run my debug. And sure enough, we're going to go through all of that. Type a number to reverse. I'm going to say thank you. And you're going to do that. Thank you so much. Whoops, a daisy. Is 155. Whoops. Momo module, my nine. I'm on nine. Yes. bring this up so the debugger let me bring it to number one right here let me bring this up to the very top now the debugger is not going to run through this line of code here because all we're doing is we're giving a for loop but again for loops uh, definition so forth they're not going to run through the code until you call it um, and I, beyond this, I didn't call it, so there was no need to, to run through it. So we're not going to get anything in this output over here. We're only going to get the outputs down below. So for Moomoo in range 1, 50, so we're starting at 1. We're not starting at 0. If Moomoo uh, modulo 3 is equal to three, 0, so if I take the number divided by 3 and I have no remainder, meaning it's a multiple of 3, we're going to print super. If the uh, number at that time divided by 5 has no variable, meaning it's a divis divisible by 5, multiple of 5 will print badass. And if the number is divisible by 3 and 5 with no remainder, we'll print super badass. Otherwise, we want to print whatever the number is at that moment of time as we go from 1 to 50. So you can see in the output we have number 1, number 2. They are, when they went through this, number one goes through, one divide, one uh, modulo three has a remainder, so that's false. It would have jumped here. One modulo five has a remainder, so that's false. And then modulo three and modulo five, those are both false. Then it jumps to else, it prints mumu, or it prints the number, which is one. Same thing for two. When I get to three, it goes, if three modulo three equals zero, which is true, print supa. That's true. Now it's going to jump back to the beginning of the four mumu. And then uh, we get to four, uh, three, four, badass, five, super, six. I just realized that, yep, it's still printing the number as it goes through after instead of replacing it. Um, I'm going to have to fix that, that bug in the system. And then down here where we have, I just wanted to show real quick, super badass. That means that the number was both divisible by three and divisible by five at the same time. Um, do 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 multiple of three, multiple of five. If it's more than false, but three, so that would have been. Yeah, I have to not include that number. Else, print the mumu. All right, so I will fix that bug when I execute this code. Um, but everybody have an excellent day and come back for day number ten of one hundred days to master Python. Take it easy.